Hey everybody, um, this is, um, this is the preface to, um, a book titled Mapping the New Left Anti-Semitism, the Fathom Essays, Studies in, from the Studies in Contemporary Anti-Semitism series, um, which is edited by, uh, Alan Johnson. Um, I want to read the, uh, just some of the introductory stuff. Um, as well as, like, the, uh, notes on the contributors and so on, in addition to the preface. Um, the first thing in the book says, Mapping the New Left Antisemitism. Uh, Mapping the New Left Antisemitism, the Fathom Essays, provides a comprehensive guide to contemporary left antisemitism. The rise of a new and largely left-wing form of anti-Semitism in the era of the Jewish state and the distinction between it and legitimate criticism of Israel are now roiling progressive politics in the West and causing alarming spikes in anti-Semitic incitements and incidents. Fathom Journal has examined these questions relentlessly in the first decade of its existence, earning a reputation for careful textual analysis and cogent advocacy. In this book, the Fathom essays are contextualized by three new contributions. Leslie Claff provides... Claff provides a map of contemporary anti-Semitic forms of anti-Zionism. David Rich writes on the oft-neglected lived experience of the Jewish victims of contemporary anti-Semitism. And David Hirsch assesses the intellectual history of the left from which both Fathom and his own London Center for the, uh, for the study of contemporary anti-Semitism, as well as this book series, have emerged. Topics covered by the contributors, contributors include anti-Semitic so, I mean, topics covered by the contributors include anti-Semitic anti-Zionism and its underappreciated Soviet roots, the impact of the analogies with the Nazis, the rise of anti-Semitism on the European continent, exploring the hybrid forms emerging from a cross-fertilization between New Left, Christian, and Islamist anti-Semitism, the impact of anti-Zionist activism on higher education, and the bitter debates over the adoption of the oft-misrepresented International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, definition of anti-Semitism. Semitism. This work will be of considerable appeal to scholars and activists with an interest in anti-Semitism, Jewish studies, and the politics of Israel. It has a, the, a little bio for Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson is the founder, founding, ed, founder and editor of Fathom Journal. A professor of democratic theory and practice, he has served on the editorial boards of Socialist Organizer, Historical Materialism in the U.S. Socialist Journals, New Politics, and Dissent. His writings on the left and on anti-Semitism include Aram de Stercour, Anti-Totalitarianism and the Thought of Primo Levi, in G Thinking Towards Humanity, Themes from Norman Garris, edited by Stephen, excuse me, Stephen de Wiza, W I J Z E, I guess that's Visa or Vitsa, uh, and Eve Gerard, 2012, and, report, and the report Institutionally Anti Semitic Contemporary Left Anti Semitism and the Crisis in the British Labour Party from 2019. Um, here's a, uh, uh, it says, uh, this is a little introduction to the study, the, the series that this book, uh, is part of, uh, Studies in Contemporary Anti-Semitism. Series editors, David Hirsch, Senior Lecturer in Sociology, Goldsmiths, University of London, Academic Director of the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Anti-Semitism. Rosa Friedman, Professor in the School of Law, University of Reading and Research Fellow at the London Center for the Contem Study of Contemporary Anti-Semitism. Published in conjunction with the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism, Studies in Contemporary Antisemitism is a timely multidisciplinary book series drawing primarily but not exclusively on the social sciences and the humanities. The series encourages academically rigorous and critical publications across several disciplines that are explicit in understanding and opposing the presence and descendancy of contemporary antisemitism 
in both its theoretical and empirical manifestations. The series attempts series provides a unique opportunity to offer an intellectual home for a diversity of works that, taken together, crystallize around the study of contemporary anti-Semitism. The series consists of research monographs, edited collections, and short form titles. Um, uh, at this time, I know I know they have more pieces out since this uh, this has come out. This uh, journal has come out. I mean, this book has come out. Jesus Christ! Uh, but the two titles listed here are uh, Nazis, Islamic anti-Semitism in the Middle East, the 1948 Arab War against Israel, and the aftershocks of World War II by Matthias Kunzel. Uh, Matthias Kunzel, uh, uh, like Alan Johnson, <coughs> um, comes from a left-wing background. Uh, he was uh, a part of the uh, early anti-Deutsch. Uh, I think he was in like a one of the um, like Ka groups or K groups. I do not know what his current politics are now, uh, but I know he writes uh, consistently on um, anti-Semitism in the uh, Arab world. The other uh, book is the book that I'm reading from now, Mapping the New Left Anti-Semitism, the Fathom Essay, Fathom Essay is edited by Alan Johnson. All right, so we've gotten that out of the way. What's the next thing we're reading? Um, the book is dedicated with love to Debbie and our children, Ellie and Michael. Um, I'll read the table of contents. Shit, why not? Part 1, Introduction and Contents. Introduction to Mapping Left Anti-Semitism, The Fathom Essays, by Alan Johnson. A New Form of the Oldest Hatred, Mapping Anti-Semitism Today, by Leslie Claff. The Jewish Experience of Anti-Semitism, Dave Rich. The Left and the Jews, Time for a Rethink, Alan Johnson. I actually have The Left and the Jews, Time for a Rethink uh, on this channel. Um, part 2, Contemporary Left Anti-Semitism. Uh, what is Left Anti-Semitism by Sean Matt Gomna? That's on this channel. Anti-Zionism and Anti-Semitism. That's already on the channel. Alibi Anti-Semitism. I actually listened to myself reading that last night. It's a very good piece. Alibi Anti-Semitism by Norman Garris. Like a Cloud Contains a Storm, Jean Amory's Critique of Anti-Zionism by Mar Mar Marlena Gallner. I have a piece by Marlena Gallner and several pieces from the edited volume uh, of Jean Amory's uh, works that she put together. Um... What Corbin's favorite sociologists Greg Filo and Mike Berry get wrong about contemporary anti-Semitism by Matthew Bolton. Uh, that piece is on this channel, and as well as other pieces by Matthew Bolton. Matthew Bolton wrote a book with uh, Frederick Harry Pitts. Um, that's a critique of um, uh, Corbinism. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with who Frederick Harry Pitts is, uh, he's written a good deal on like contemporary forms of... Uh, value theory, uh, both the uh, coming out of the Neue Marx Lectura, and, but also um, uh, the theories of value and the critique of political economy coming out of uh, aparismo and post-aparismo. Um, next is Anti-Semitism and the Left, a memoir by Kathleen Hayes. Uh, I have a piece by Kathleen Hayes actually on this channel. It's not this piece, though. I think it's called uh, An Open Letter to the Anti-Zionist Left. Um, Denial, Norman Finkelstein, and the New Anti-Semitism by Alan Johnson. Uh, I actually have this piece on the channel already. Um, this is probably the most hated and most viewed piece I have on the uh, channel. I think it also probably has the most likes. It's definitely the most viewed channel. People uh, are fanatical in their love of Norman Finkelstein, as I've learned uh, from posting that video, which is really depressing because I was like, man, maybe what Alan Johnson says in this piece is like really inflammatory stuff, you know, like if people hate it that much. But I listened to it recently and it was like very, va very, very sound um, arguments and very, very uh, sound documentation of uh, Norman Finkelstein's comments and behavior. Um, 
Next, quote, toxic gifts. Israel and the anti-Zionists left an interview with Susie Linfield. Part 3. The Soviet Roots of Contemporary Left Antisemitism. Uh, Soviet Antisemitism and Contemporary Left Antisemitism by Isabella Taborovsky. Uh, that piece is on this channel, I believe. Uh, I definitely have something by Isabella Taborovsky. If it's not this piece, then it's something else. Communists Against Jews, the Anti-Zionist Campaign in Poland in 1968 Simon Gan by Simon Ganzinger, which is on this channel. Uh... The German Left's Undeclared Wars on Israel, an interview with Jeffrey Herf. Um, I have pieces by Jeffrey Herf on this channel, but I also have a critical review of Jeffrey Herf's book, uh, The German Left's Undeclared Wars on Israel, um, uh, by uh, Christoph Frangeli, um, who is the uh, main editor at the journal uh, uh, Dataside. Journal of Noise and Politics, which has, like, pieces on um, uh, dance music and electronic music, as well as uh, um, uh, works coming from uh, libertarian, uh, non-dogmatic, uh, left, uh, communist perspective. <laughs> um, not in the like, strict sense of left communism, but, I mean, uh, I wasn't trying to label what he was, like, his project left communist in some kind of, like, specific, uh, sense of the term. Um, but Jeffrey Herf, uh, also important for Jeffrey Herf, I don't know what his politics are now, I think he actually is, I don't know, I get the impression that he is fairly, uh, conservative, but, um, Jeffrey Herf, uh, doesn't the critique that Fringelli uh, levels against Jeffrey Herp is that he doesn't acknowledge the um, uh, the early criticisms of anti-Zionism and left anti-Semitism coming out of the German left in his book. It all kind of like um, which it, which he says is odd because uh, uh. Jeffrey Herf has shared stages with uh, people who come from, like, a radical left perspective who, uh, like, people from the Anti-Deutsch, um, or the Anti-Deutsche, um, but Jeffrey Herf himself, I believe, was, uh, a student in Germany, and he translated, um, one of, uh, uh, Alfred Schmidt, uh, the great, uh, second generation Frankfurt School uh, critic, uh, critical theorist who, you know, was more in the uh, Marxian tradition than um, Habermas, one of his books. So Jeffrey Herf has uh, some kind of interest, at least historically, um, in radical left politics. I don't know why he would translate that particular book, which is highly obscure and uh, certainly not lucrative if he did not have an interest in the subject matter. So, that's interesting. Part 4. Left Antisemitism and the Holocaust. Holocaust Inversion and Contemporary Antisemitism by Leslie Claff. Also, one of my most hated videos that I've put on this channel. Um, Hitler and Nazis and the Nazis Anti-Zionism by Jeffrey Herf, which is a, a response to... Um, uh, what's his name? Ken Livingston's, you know, uh, famous declaration that you know, you know, n not Zionists are actually Nazi collaborators. Um, uh, but um, yes, that's a, I have I believe that piece is already on the channel. Um, Holocaust falsifiers blaming, quote, Zionists for the crimes of the Nazis, Paul Bogdanor. Part 5, Left Antisemitism in Europe and the United States. Uh, Reflections on Contemporary Antisemitism in Europe by Kenneth Walzer. Uh, the Unwelcome Arrival of the Quenel uh, by Dave Rich. That's on the channel already. Uh, a Modern Orthodox Christian Ritual Murder Libel, St. Philomenos of Jacob's Well, by David Guverich. 
We shall be a city on a hill. We shall be as a city on a hill. Trump, quote, progressive anti-Semitism and the loss of American Jewish exceptionalism by Shalom Lapin. Part 6, left, Amer left anti-Semitism in academia. The meaning of David Miller by David Hirsch. From scholarship to polemic, a case study of the emerging crisis in academic publishing on Israel by Kerry Nelson. Pathologizing, quote, Jewish being and thinking, end quote. Oren Bendor and Academic Anti-Semitism by Sarah Anns Brown. Part 7. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. 26. A Misrepresentation of the IRA Definition of Anti-Semitism by Dave Rich. Political Anti-Semitism, A Defense of the IRA Definition by Bernard Harrison and Leslie Clath. Part 8. Theory and Left Anti-Semitism. Misreading Hannah Arendt. Judith Butler's Anti-Zionism and the Eichmann Trial, Russell A. Behrman. The Pleasures of Anti-Semitism, Eve Girard. Intersectionality and Anti-Semitism, A New Approach by Karen Stugner. I believe I have this pe that piece is already on the channel. I believe Pleasures of Anti-Semitism is also on this channel. And finally, Left Alternatives to Left Anti-Semitism, A Conversation Between Alan Johnson and Philip Spencer. Um, Alan Johnson, both coming from um, the radical left space in the UK, um, who are contemporary commentators on left anti-Semitism. So that's the table of contents. Moving on to the contributors. Russell A. Berman is Walter A. Haas Professor in the Humanities at Stanford University. He is also a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, not a ringing endorsement, where he directs the working group on the Middle East and Islamic world. His works include The Rise of Modern, the Modern German Novel, Crisis and Charisma, 1986, Fiction Sets You Free, Literature, Liberty, and Western Culture, 2007, and Anti-Americanism in Europe, A Cultural Problem, 2008. He is Editor Emeritus of the Quarterly Telos and a member of the National Humanities Council. Um, Telos definitely had a rightward turn um, at some point. Uh, However, it's one of the few spaces where a leftist uh, can critique left anti-Semitism uh, currently. Um, the fact that uh, Editor Emeritus is also uh, the uh, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution is not a good, uh, not a ringing endorsement at all. Um, but uh, in general with a lot of these things is... Uh, what I would say is that um, when you're critiquing, uh, uh, not all critiques of Stalinism uh, come from the, um, you know, a left perspective, and uh, you know you have to read, uh, you know, critiques of Stalinism coming from the non uh, non radical left uh, perspective uh, critically. But also, uh, just because um, uh, someone who you disagree with politically says something about a topic doesn't mean what they have just said is untrue. Anyway, Paul Bogdanor is an independent researcher in the United Kingdom. He is the co-editor with Edward Alexander of The Jewish Divide Over Israel, Accusers and Defenders, 2006, and the author of Kastner's Crime, 2016. Matthew Bolton is a researcher at the Centrum für Antisemitismusforschung, TU Berlin. He is the co-author with Frederick Harry Pritt, Pitts of Corbinism, A Critical Approach, 2018, and has written for journals such as The Political Quarterly, British Politics, and the Journal of Contemporary Antisemitism. Sarah Anns Brown is professor of English literature at Angela Ruskin University. Anglia Ruskin University, excuse me. Her research interests include Ovid's Metamorphoses and Shakespeare's influence on science fiction. Marlene Gallner is the editor of Jean Amery Essays on Anti Semitism, Anti Zionism, and the Left, published in 2022. An independent scholar, she is the editor of, the, of San Fraise, Sightschrift for Ideology Critique, the Vienna based biannual 
German language journal dedicated to social and cultural analysis and the tradition of Frankfurt School critical theory. Um, other important figures that have contributed that are, is a, is a, um, include um, Gerhard Schreit, who was um, um, a uh, <clears throat> German communist affiliated with uh, the anti-Deutsch. And there's other people. Um, whose names I can't uh, think of right now. Um, Simon Ganzinger is finishing his doctrine on reasons of state as reasons in law at the Department of Philosophy at the University of Warwick. He has worked on the Frankfurt School of Legal Philosophy and, psychoanalysis, and the psychoanalysis of anti-Semitism. His most recent publication in German, quote, Inertia is Progress, Neumann and Horkheimer on the Normative Potential of Law, end quote, and Kritische Theorien und Zeitliche Dimensionen, supplement to Archives for Philosophy of Law and Social Philosophy, edited by Sonja Heimvat et al., Stuttgart, Franz Steiner Fairlag, forthcoming. Yves Girard was Senior Lecturer in Philosophy and Professional Ethics at the University of Kiel, and later the Research Fellow in the Department of Philosophy at Manchester University. Prior to her retirement, prior to her prior to her retirement, her research interests are in meta ethics and applied ethics, and she has published various papers on Holocaust, the Holocaust and on the concepts of evil and forgiveness. She is also co-edited with Dr. Jeffrey Scare, Moral Philosophy and the Holocaust, with Reutledge, 2003. Norman Garris, who lived from 1943 to 2013 was Professor Emeritus of the University of Manchester. He's the author of many works, including The Legacy of Rosa Luxemburg, 1976, Marx and Human Nature, Refutation of a Legend, 1983, and The Contract of Mutual Indifference, Political Philosophy After the Holocaust, 1998. David Guverich is a research fellow at the University of Haifa, Israel. He studied the material culture of pilgrimage, Israel Church Relations and Jerusalem. He co edited with Anat Kidron, Exploring the Holy Land, 2019. Bernard Harrison is Pro Emeritus E.E. E. Erickson Professor of Philosophy in the University of Utah and Emeritus Professor in the Faculty of Humanities, University of Sussex, UK. He's the author of The Resurgence of Anti Semitism, Jews, Israel, and Liberal Opinion, 2006, and Blaming the Jews Politics and Delusion, 2022. Kathleen Haynes is an independent writer, and she is published in Fathom and Tablet. And uh, Wikipedia says Tablet is a conservative leaning on mag online magazine focused on Jewish news and culture. The magazine was founded in 2009 and is supported by the Netbook Foundation. Its editor in chief is Alana Newhouse. Jeffrey Herf is Distinguished University Professor Emeritus at the University of Maryland College Park, USA. His books include Israel's Moment, International Support for and Opposition to Establishing the Jewish State, 1945-1949, published in 2022, and Undeclared Wars with Israel, East Germany, and the West German Far Left, 1967-1989. David Hirsch is Senior Lecturer in Sociology at Goldsmith University, London, and is the academic director and CEO of the London Center for Study of Contemporary Anti-Semitism. In 2005, he founded the Engage Network and website, which coordinated the resistance to the campaign to boycott Israel universities. He is the author of Contemporary Left Anti-Semitism, published with Reutledge in 2018. Wesley Claff is Senior Lecturer in Law at Sheffield Hallam University, or Hallam University, 
and research fellow at the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism. She is editor in chief of the Journal of Contemporary Antisemitism and author of several publications on antisemitism and the law. Her most recent article, What is an English Jew? The Legal Construction of Jewish Identity under the UK Equality Act of 2010, end quote, was published in Volume 11, Issue 1 of the Indiana Journal of Law and Social Equality in January 2023. Shalom Lappin is Professor of Natural Language Processing at Queen Mary University of London, Professor of Computational Linguistics at the University of Gothenburg, and Emeritus Professor of Computational Linguistics at King's College London. Susie Linfield is the author of The Cruel Radiance, Photography and Political Violence 2012, and The Lion's Den, Zionism and the Left from Hannah Arendt to Noam Chomsky 2019. She is a Professor of Journalism at New York University. Sean Matt Gomna is a leading member of the Alliance for Workers' Liberty. He is the editor of The Fate of the Russian Revolution, Volume 1, Lost Texts of Critical Marxism, published in 1998, The Left in Disarray, 2017, The Fate of the Russian Revolution, Volume 2, The Tro Two Trotskyisms Confront Stalinism, 2015. Um, if you're interested, I have the, it, his introduction, Matt Gomna's introduction to The Fate of the Russian Revolution, uh, Volume 1, Lost Texts of Critical Marxism, is going uh, is has been recorded and is going up on the channel, and several of the pieces uh, that are going to continue to come up uh, from Sh uh, Max Schachtman are come from the fate of the Russian Revolution, Volume One. Uh, Carrie Nelson is Jubilee Professor of Liberal Arts and Science Emer Sciences Emeritus at the University of Illinois Ur at Urbana-Champaign. His thirty-six books include Israel Denial. Anti-Zionism, Anti-Semitism, and the Faculty Campaign Against the Jewish State, 2019, and Hate Speech and Academic Freedom, an the Anti-Semitic Assault on Basic Values, forthcoming. Dave Rich is Director of P Policy at the Community Security Trust, a Jewish charity that provides advice and support to the UK Jewish community on matters relating to anti-Semitism, terrorism, and extremism. He is a research fellow at the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism and is on the editorial board of the Journal of Contemporary Antisemitism. He is the author of The Left Jewish Problem, Jeremy Corbyn, Israel and Antisemitism, 2016 and 2018, and Everyday Hate, How Antisemitism is Built into Our World and How You Can Change It, 2023. Philip Spencer is Emeritus Professor in Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Kingston University and Visiting Professor in Politics in Burbeck University of London. He's the co-author with Robert Fine, who also comes from, like I said earlier, Philip Spencer comes from a radical left tradition, and so does uh, Robert Fine. Uh, Philip Spencer has uh, pieces, at least one piece, uh, in the journal Critique, uh, edited by Hillel Tickton, and Robert Fine has a piece in... Um, uh, one of the Open Marxism books uh, edited by uh, Werner Brunefeld. Um, Karen Stugner, I also have an entire book by Robert Fine on here uh, called uh, Marxism and the Rule of Law. I think the first chapter I fucked up the recording and missed like a big chunk of it, so it's uh, a very shitty recording of <laughs> his book, um, but there hasn't been much interest in it anyway, so no one gets to see uh, my... Um, my uh, dog shit uh, recording of it, which has a big gas gap in it. Um, Karen Stugner, again, I have her on the channel, is professor of sociology at the University of Passau. Her research focuses mainly on the critical theory of the Frankfurt School and on feminist theory, as well as on anti Semitism, racism, and gender. She has authored Antisemitismus und Sexismus, Historisch Gesellschaftliche Konstellationen. A comprehensive volume on the socio historical constellation of anti Semitism and sexism in 2014, and co edited Kritische Theorie und Feminismus, a volume on feminist readings of critical theory from 2022. Isabella Taborowski is a senior editor, senior advisor at the Kennan Institute Wilson Center, a fellow at the Institute for the Study of Global Anti Semitism and Policy a fellow at the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism, and a contributing writer at Tablet Magazine. Her research expertise includes politics of historical memory, the Holocaust, Stalin's repressions, and Soviet and contemporary antisemitism. Her publications have appeared in Newsweek, The Jewish Daily Forward, 
Tablet, Fathom, The National Interest, and The Wilson Quarterly. Kenneth Walzer is a professor of history emeritus at Michigan State University. His most recent publication is, quote, is called Contending with Antisemitism and Its Many Forms on American Campuses in Contending with Antisemitism in a Rapidly Changing Political Climate, edited by Albert H. Rosenfeld in 2021. He is the founding executive director at the Academic Engagement Network, AEN, which organizes American faculty to confront BDS campaigns on American campuses. Michael Walzer is, a prof is professor emeritus of social science at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. He is the author of Just and Unjust Wars in 1977 and many other books, and was for 20 years the co-editor of Descent Magazine. Acknowledgements. Uh, this is from Alan Johnson, I assume. I have been helped, criticized, and inspired by a number of people in the course of thinking about and writing against left anti-Semitism over the last 40 years, editing Fathom over the last decade, and assembling this collection over the last year. Among those whom I should especially like to express my gratitude, sorry for any omissions from this list, are Jane Ashworth, Lauren Bell Cross, Caleb Ben Dor, Paul Berman, Clive Bradley, Gabriel Noah Brom, Ben Cohen, Mitchell Cohen, I have a piece by uh, Mitchell Cohen on here, uh, titled uh, From Stalin to Hamas, um, The Left in October 7th, or something like that. Uh, the late Steve Cohen, Steve Cohen wrote a book, I believe I believe that Steve Cohen wrote a book, um, Funny You Don't Look Anti-Semitic, uh, Stan Crook, the late Robert Fine, Barry Finger, I have pieces by Barry Finger on... Uh, both on left anti-Semitism and uh, uh, the bureaucratic collectivist theory of the um, uh, <coughs> Soviet uh, Union. Uh, Robert Fine, uh, Barry Finger, and and at least um, Alan Johnson in his younger period. Now I think he would probably less wouldn't describe himself as a Trotskyist. It was, it was you know a radical you know a democratic socialist. Um, they all come from the UK version of uh, third camp uh, Trotsky's position. Barry Finger is American. I think he's um, pretty lonely these days at um, uh, New Politics, which he was an editor of, uh, in terms of his uh, opinions on um, Zionism. Uh, but I believe he's still an editor there. He's like a trade union organizer as well. Um, Ruth Fisher, Eve Gerard, Mark Gardner, the late Norman Garris. Uh, I believe Norman Garris was an editor. He might have, I'm not sure, but I believe he was an editor at New Left Review. I'm not sure, though. Richard Gold, Toby Green, Bernard Harrison, David Hirsch, Anthony Julius, Dermot Keough, Leslie Claff, Andre Markovitz. I think Andre Markovitz... Uh, I'm not sure, but he's definitely in conversation with, like, um, I think he writes about, like, I'm not sure, actually. He's somebody, though. Sean Matt Gomna, again, British uh, third camp Trotskyism. Kerry Nelson, Sam Nerding, Jack Omer Jackman, have a piece from him on the channel. Richard Patter, Simon Pottinger, Dave Rich, Alvin Rosenfeld, Philip Spencer, John Strawson, Martin Thomas. Uh, if you don't know who Martin Thomas is, Martin Thomas has also written on um, the uh, Soviet Union. Although I think he comes from uh, a third camp Trotskyist background, I think he might be in the minority within like the Alliance for Workers' Liberty, but I believe he has a uh, state capitalist conception of the USSR as opposed to a bureaucratic collectivist. But again, uh, British third camp Trotskyism. Michael Walzer, Steve De... Weitza and Debbie Williams. Institutions not only within but also outside academia are vital to sustaining research into an action to combat anti-Semitism. I would like to thank the students who made the te made teaching the Holocaust and leading the Primo Levi reading group at Edge Hill University the experience of a lifetime. Thanks also to the editorial board, to editorial board members of the journals Democratia. 2005 to 2010, incorporated into Dissent, 
and Fathom 2012 to the present. Fathom has made possible was made possible by the board of BICOM, who understood that there was a crying need for a journal of expert analysis, often critical, informed opinion, genuine debate, and global reach that would combat rising anti-Semitism, defend the right to exist in security of the world's only Jewish state, and make the intellectual case for the two states for two peoples paradigm of peacemaking between Israelis and Palestinians, and do so by publishing creative thinking from a wide spectrum of perspectives, left and right, secular and religious, Israeli and Palestinian. I would like to express my gratitude for the granting of permission to reproduce essays from Fathom that first appeared elsewhere, to dissent for the essay by Michael Waltzer, to the Alliance for Workers' Liberty, for Sean Matt Gomna's essay, and to Indiana University, Uni Uni Indiana University Press, for the extract from my own essay, Denial, Norman Finkelstein, and the New Antisemitism. Thanks for the helpful comments to three anonymous readers and for the encouragement and guidance of Craig Fowley, Elizabeth Hart, at Reutledge. I owe a considerable debt to my family for their love, encouragement, and unfailing support in Debbie, Ellie, and Michael. Or, excuse me. To Debbie, Ellie, and Michael. Preface, the Critique of the Critique. Projects, Fathom. This volume is a testament to the Fathom Project, to its energy, to its clarity, its impact. Fathom is an online forum for reality-based discourse about Israel and its conflicts with its neighbors and for thinking about the anti-Semitism that associates itself with discourse about Israel. In January 2001, the Israeli-Palestinian peace process collapsed, at least that process did, and for that period. The following September, anti-Zionism, for which it is axiomatic that such a peace process could never succeed, reasserted itself in the global left and liberal imagination as the common sense view at the Durban World Conference against racism. A, pe a week later, planes slammed into the World Trade Center in New York City into the Pentagon, and one was prevented by a heroic struggle from slamming into the White House. The Durban program for boycott divestment sanctions against Israel was taken up by academics in London who agitated for the exclusion of Israelis from university campuses. The academic unions in Britain did not adopt the boycott of Israeli universities, but they did allow the boycotters to create a culture in which, by 2009, there were no Jews left in their decision-making structures who were willing and able to argue against the anti-Zionism or the anti-Semitism the anti that came with it and which inspired it. Fathom was created in 2012 in the wake of the university and college union defeat of the activists who were challenging its anti-Semitic culture and norms. And at a time when anti-Semitism was spreading from the academic unit into the key activist layers of the labor movement and the left. By 2015, the Labor Party had elected Jeremy Corbyn as leader, a man steeped in a lifetime of anti-Zionist politics who not only called Hamas and Hezbollah his, quote, friends, but claim that Hamas were, quote, bringing about long-term peace and social justice and political justice in the whole region, end quote. Fathom was well established by then, and it was in a position to offer an intellectual and political lead to those who wanted to understand the labor anti-Semitism storm and to those who found themselves inside it. Fathom offered a space for the resistance to labor anti-Semitism, to think and debate, to learn and to teach. Alan Johnson's own 30,000 word 2019 Fathom Report, Institutionally Anti-Semitic, Contemporary Left Anti-Semitism and the Crisis in the British Labor Party, went through 130 examples of labor anti-Semitism, giving evidence that they, had, they, they happened, and offering clear explanations of why they were anti-Semitic. Johnson, 2019. It was cited in the damning report of the UK's Equality and Human Rights Commission into Anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, EHRC, 2020. The EHRC report also made it clear that one of the key manifestations of the, quote, unlawful harassment of Jews, end quote, in Corbyn's Labour Party was the assumption of bad faith made against those who reported anti-Semitism. This is the assumption that people were only prevented to th pretending to think that there was anti-Semitism, but were in reality, quote, faking it or, quote, smearing Corbyn and his faction in pursuance of an unstated underlying motive. The EHRC was redescribing the phenomenon that I had called, quote, the Livingston formulation, end quote, 
in the language of UK equality law, Hirsch. The EHRC drew on the evidence and understanding that had been developed, nurtured, and published by Johnson in the Fathom Project and by me through the Engage Project. Studies in Contemporary Antisemitism in the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism. This Fathom collection is one of the first books in a new book series, edited by myself and Rosa Friedman. Studies in Contemporary Antisemitism is a collaboration between Reutledge and the London Center for the Study of Contemporary Antisemitism, LCSCA, and it is one element of an ambitious program to establish a suite of platforms to publish academic research and debate on contemporary antisemitism. We are also nurturing the Journal of Contemporary Antisemitism, a high-quality, peer-reviewed academic platform for publishing research. We are producing policy papers, journalism, blogs, social media, and videos, which play important roles in disseminating academic research more widely. We are growing our network of anti-Semitism scholarship on an international community as an international community of research, of reading and writing, and of peer review. Around that active academic core, we are developing wider networks of debate, learning, and activism. Both Fathom and the London Center are responses to the late 20th century developments on the left that have continued to a re contributed to a resurgence of left anti-Semitism. Transformations. The rise of, quote, we are all Hezbollah now, end quote. Excuse me, the rise of a, quote, we are all Hezbollah now, end quote, left. The left-wing anti-Stalin tradition in which both Allen and I were formed politically took as its target those unjust social structures of power that excluded the majority of people from the full benefits of the Enlightenment. We thought that our project was to complete the Enlightenment for all of humanity rather than to allow it to remain something that worked best for the privilege. So we were aghast as our students were increasingly taught that far from being the solution, the Enlightenment was the problem. A left and intellectual tradition, which is quite different to our own, taught that the injustices of ancient societies were simply reconstituted by the Enlightenment, but on a more totalizing and oppressive basis. This tradition taught that ostensibly liberating ideas and practices, like reason, science, equality, democracy, autonomy, and rights, all placed in sneer quotes, in fact, constituted the heart of a modernity of unimaginably effect efficient, rationalized, and powerful enslavement, which replaced the piecemeal, personalized, and explicit oppression of old. In this view, the Enlightenment was the fall into darkness, not the path toward the light, and it was a fall which, more and more, is now being treated in practice as irreversible. The aspiration to create a new and better world was giving way to an incoherent, furious, and negative politics of, quote, resistance. Hannah Arendt, and I want to copy this real quick. Second, sorry. Sorry. Thought I had the document that I planned to copy this into right here, but I didn't. Back to the text, sorry. Hannah Arendt thought that at the heart of the 20th century, <coughs> that at the heart of 20th century totalitarianism was an especially toxic ingredient, the breaking free of utopian thinking from immediate practical and material concerns. This is not to say there is anything wrong with thinking about how to make the world better, only that such thought must not lose its connection with reality. The politics of common interest and its consequent structures in the modern state and civil society she argued, binds people into communities that share limited and obtainable goals, but totalitarian politics gains a hold where those communal bonds are already cut. And to the extent that those bonds persist, totalitarianism cuts them away. It preys on, quote, masses of furious, atomized individuals who have already been spat out of society, who it teaches to obsess only about a far-off and dreamed future of sweet revenge and utopian comfort. The, quote, masses that totalitarian politics prey on are people who have no immediate next step forward and no comrades or even family or friends to take it with. 
Totalitarian movements seduce their followers into relating to the world only through the single figures of the strongman leader and the fantasies he sows of revenge and utopia. The 2001 Stop the War Camp... Excuse me. The two, in 2001, quote, Stop the War, end quote, originated as a campaign against a particular proposed war, the one against the Taliban in Afghanistan after 9-11. But the campaign persisted, retaining the same name, when it opposed subsequent wars in the first place, the 2003 invasion of Iraq. It did not oppose all wars, however. It focused on the wars of the, quote, imperialist states. And in the case of Iraq, it even refused to support refused support to the free trade unions that emerged there after the invasion. When one of the leaders of these unions, Hadi Saleh, a man arrested and put on death row under Saddam, returned to Iraq to build new free trade unions, he was tortured and murdered by Saddamist holdouts in 2005. One leading British anti, quote, anti-war left-winger, Alex Kalinikos, of the Socialist Workers' Party, sneered at those who raised Hadi's case for creating, quote, a hullabaloo, about a, quote, collaborator. This left current gave the name, quote, imperialism to the democratic states of the West and the name, quote, anti-imperialism to anyone shooting at those states or their allies. Anybody fighting against the imperialist aggressors or their allies should be supported. The Trotskyist and Stalinist heritage of many of the Stop the War leaders is relevant here. The old division of the world into two warring camps, one reactionary and one progressive, it meant that even if Stalin was, quote, betraying the revolution, end quote, and instigating a rule of terror, one should still, quote, defend the Soviet Union, end quote, against the, quote, imperialists, end quote. The two camps' worldview has been updated for today, even if the, quote, resistance to, quote, empire includes anti-Semitic Islamists, and even if its targets include the 21 Jews, including 16 teenagers, who were murdered by a suicide bomber in 2001 while dancing at... Dolphinarium discotheque at the Dolphinarium discotheque. One should never support, but always oppose, any Western attack or act of self defense against the resistance. Stop the War's one time pres- Vice President Kamal Majid founded the Stalin Society and argued in 2012 that Syria's Assad were rulers, quote, with a long history of resisting imperialism, end quote, who must be supported because their own their defeat will pave the way for a pro-Western and a pro-Western and pro-U.S. regime. Fuck. Right, to the text. In this radical transformation of the very meaning of, quote, left, many left and democratic values were sidelined. Equality for women, sexual liberation, the fight against anti-Zionist forms of anti-Semitism, the rule of law, democracy, human rights, freedom of speech, working class self-liberation, science and reason, respect for minorities and national self-determination. The political significance of this cannot be overstated. Once a transformed left decided to raise the value of a particular understanding of, quote, anti-imperialism, which can seemingly accommodate even the murder of Jews as Jews, to an absolute, assigning it more value than any and all of these other left-wing values, the road was open to the left chanting, quote, we are all Hezbollah now, end quote, to giving de facto support for the Serbia of Milosevic, the Iraq of Saddam, the Iran of the Ayatollahs, and the Russia of Putin, and to the left-wing academic, Judith Butler, insisting that, quote, understanding Hamas and Hezbollah as social movements that are progressive, that are on the left, are the part of a global left, is extremely important, end quote. Butler.
sorry. Some good summaries here. Quote, imperialism for this transformed left does not refer to strong states colonizing and controlling weaker states and peoples. It refers to a global system of domination that is said to have arisen in Europe via the Enlightenment, colonialism, and the Industrial Revolution, which now enslaves the world, is the root cause of bad things that happen to human beings and at the center of which, for some left-wingers, sits the only Jewish state in the world. The story of how, quote, Zionism, or, quote, global Zionism, was added to this all-encompassing concept as that it became either central to or symbolic of the single global machine of domination is the story of contemporary left anti-Semitism and this collection. New section, Critique of the Critique. Alan and I trace our own critique of this critique to our formation in the heterodox Trotskyist organization, Socialist Organizer, later to become Workers' Liberty, in the 1980s when its main leader and theoretician, Sean Matt Gaumann and others, were persuading the group to move away from the anti-Zionism that had already become standard on the Trotskyist left to support, quote, two states for two peoples position on the conflict and to recognize the, and recognize the significance of left anti-Semitism. Through this, though this made the group particularly, uh, although this made the group pariahs on the far left, McGominnell was influential in the political education of a number of people who later contributed significantly to shaping the response of the Jewish community and of UK society more generally to anti-Zionism and its boycott and to the rise of anti-Semitism in Corbyn's Labour Party. In retrospect, perhaps the most important thing we took from our years in the group was the need to combine intellectual work with practical action. The group was concerned with the far-off goal of remaking the world as it might be, as it should be, but it was also at least an aspiration anchored to the world as it was, obsessed with the question of how to, quote, seize the next link in the chain and quote, to make progress towards that new world. That meant the steady work of involvement, hopefully fructifying in existing organizations. Socialist organizer was, for example, part of the, quote, Benite democracy movement in the Labour Party in the late 1970s and early 1980s of the resistance to the far left's drive to ban Jewish student societies from UK campuses in the mid-1980s and of the Solidarity Network supporting the strikers and their families in the Knott's Coalfield during the Great Miner Strike of 18, 1984 and 1985. It was not our role to substitute for those movements trading in fantasies of revolutionary violence. In the early 2000s, we were both increasingly worried by the left-wing movements around us becoming unmoored from the material world and floating off where they fancied. And the scholarly thinking around us no longer seemed to challenge existing inequalities or injustices in any practical way, and it did corrupt, though it did corrupt ways of thinking about them, co-opting them into crude Manichaean frameworks of which, quote, empire versus, quote, resistance was only one of the crudest. The scholars seemed not to care or even to notice they were not connected to any practical sense in which it mattered other than to their own success in constructing theoretical criticism. One second. I've got to change rooms. One second. Hello. We saw a left that was increasingly no longer satisfied with addressing the oppressive structures of social relations as we had been. They wanted to smash everything, truth, reason, civil society, state, freedom, law, community, nation, democracy, and friendship. These were all denounced as fake productions of those who benefit from, quote, the system, facades to hide reality and to fool the majority into consenting to their own subordination. One of our common mentors, Robert Fine, who also had a socialist organizer pedigree, worked hard in the realm of social theory to hold on to both the radicalism and anti-totalitarianism of the tradition. He argued that we should never let go of the critique of existing conditions with their injustices, inequalities, and violence, but he said that we must also keep a tight hold with our other hand of the critique of the critique. By quote, critique of the critique, end quote, 
find meant a critical engagement with those ideas and movements that are oppositional with respect to existing conditions. Perhaps Robert Fine's key observation, the alarm that his work sounds, is that the significance of left authoritarianism, that of the is that of the significance of left authoritarianism and totalitarianism, their deep roots and lasting legacies have not been sufficiently registered inside contemporary radical thinking and politics. Those who champion the radical critique have not always understood their own responsibilities to attend to the critique of the critique. And we have become we have come to believe that failing is one important reason and we have come to believe that failing is one important reason for the contemporary resurgence of the left anti-Semitism that is addressed in this collection. I remember Alan Johnson saying that it was becoming impossible to operate in an intellectual and political environment that was increasingly unmoored from truth, reason, and the civilizational gains of the democratic and industrial revolutions. His argument was that we need to build our own journals and institutions. The unusual thing about Alan was that he did not just say it, but he also did it. In 2005, he built Democratia, a journal of rational enlightenment-based thought and politics, visions anchored to the world, and he created it out of nothing, with no money, and he published 16 issues. Democratia was incorporated into Dissent magazine in 2010 and is archived at the Dissent website. At just about the same moment, I came face to face with the common sense notion that Israel was a unique and symbolic evil on the planet and that we should address it by excluding Israeli scholars from all campuses, our journals, and conferences. The anti-Semitism oozing out from every crack of the academic boycott campaign came to find me. At the time, I was just about beginning to feel I belonged in a university sociology department, but I learned that I was not at all not at, all at home. I was transformed by this anti-Semitic thinking from a sociologist into a Zionist sociologist, meaning a dishonest, racist, and corrupt sociologist. It was clear to me how my exclusion was anti-Semitic, but that clarity was rare. I with others, who not entirely accidentally also shared some political heritage with us, set about building the Engage Network and website to organize resistance in practical political and intellectual terms to the anti-Semitism that had been recycled by 20th century Stalinism and re-disseminated after the collapse of the peace process at the Durban World Conference Against Racism in 2001. In an inspired moment in 2011, the British Israel Communications Research Center BICOM employed Alan Johnson to reboot its work of promoting awareness and knowledge and knowledge about Israel in the UK, and in another journal, uh, me, and, and in another inspired moment, Alan built Fathom, another project con con to construct our own journals and institutions within which we would take forward serious political education and debate. This time about Israel in Britain, and not only in Britain. Thinking about Israel is significantly connected to anti-Semitism, so Fathom was necessarily concerned with that too. Fathom was necessary because rational and reality-based discussion on these topics was increasingly being locked out of the mainstream academic and political discussion in Britain. Fathom was kept, has kept on going for over a decade, due largely to Alan's will to make that happen, combined with his talent and his experience in knowing how to make it happen, and his political and intellectual judgment about how it should best navigate the boundaries of the discourse that it needs to cover. I experienced writing in Fathom as a liberation from the gaslighting that passes for peer review inside the institution of the anti-Semitic hostile environment that is today's academia. In Fathom, you could write that what you felt needed to be written, and I think that some of my best writings on anti-Semitism were published there. Alan Johnson's knowledgeable, decisive, and sensitive editing helped too. And Fathom was also a hugely more nimble, was also hugely more nimble than the dinosaur academic journals, where it can take two years to publish an article, and it is all open access, not hidden away behind the exclusive dusty paywalls of the ivory, ta ivory tower. The scholarly study of contemporary anti-Semitism, as well as the study of any questions that it that is impacted by anti-Semitic thinking, is becoming more and more difficult to do within the current university system, some parts of which have been complicit with left anti-Semitism. We are significantly excluded from processes of research funding, publishing, and allocation of academic jobs and resources. In politics and culture more widely, radical democratic thinking on anti-Semitism has difficulty finding its space in the publications and on the platforms that were, one might expect to find it. The London Center aims to build institutions, networks, and funding streams to substitute for those 
that we are locked out of in the universities. This is not because we want to replicate them and to complete our separation from them, but because we want to fight our way back into the mainstream and to transform its culture and its unwritten rules of exclusion. Ours is a hugely ambiguous, ambitious project to challenge the intellectual and underpinnings of anti-Semitism in public life. It is to change some of the things that have come to appear as common sense. Fathom, as an institution, has been doing this work with great effect, not specifically in the universities, but in wider civil society and in political life too, as this collection showcases. David Hirsch Notes the Engage Network was set up in 2005 in response to the passing of some motions at the Un Association of University Teachers, AUT, Council to boycott Israeli universities. The initiative included the Engage website edited by David Hirsch, which was a space for news and discussion and for bringing together facts and arguments that people might want to use to argue against such boycott proposals and against the anti-Semitism that was associated with them. The quote, next footnote and note. The quote two camps worldview of which of the of the excuse me the quote two camps and quote worldview of the transformed left was given candid expression by the stop the war leader John Rees when he wrote that quote socialists should unconditionally stand with the oppressed against the oppressor even if the people who run the oppressed country are undemocratic and persecute minorities like Saddam Hussein end quote his colleague the Marxist writer John Molyneux drew out the logic of this worldview to the Israeli pa Israel Palestine conflict with a special clarity quote we on the left should not i suggest quote condemn palestinian suicide bombers end quote 2004 references Hannah Arendt the origins of totalitarianism James Bloodworth mother agnes has pulled out the stop the war pull, has pulled out of the stop the war conference and yet she would have fitted in so well it's from uh, The Spectator, 18th of November. Uh, Judith Butler. Judith Butler on Hamas's bull in the Israel lobby. Radical archives. Um, for a video of her remarks, see Judith Butler whitewashes Hamas and Hezbollah on YouTube. Uh, Equality and Human Rights Commission. 2020. Investigation into anti-Semitism in the Labor Party. EHRC. Available equalityhumanrights.com, blah, blah, blah. Robert Fine, Political Investigations, Hegel, Marx, Arendt, 2001. David Hirsch, The Livingston Formulation, in Eunice G. Pollock's edited volume, Anti-Zionism and Anti-Semitism, Past and Present. David Hirsch, 2018, Contemporary Left Anti-Semitism. Alan Johnson, 2019, Institutionally Anti-Semitic. Contemporary Left Anti-Semitism and the Crisis in the British Labour Party. Abdullah Musin and Alan Johnson, Hadi Never Di 2006, Hadi Never Died, Hadi Saleh and the Iraqi Trade Unions. John Molyneux, Marxism on Terrorism, The Socialist Review. John Rees, The ABC of Socialism, 1994. The end. Thank you for listening.